Hi guys, my name is Morgan Thorne. I'm a BDSM educator here on YouTube and all over the internet. I'm the author of a couple of books on BDSM and I also teach online classes right now. So if you are looking to find out about any of that stuff, just check the description box below and you will have all of that information as well as my other social media where you can follow me. So today we are going to be talking about a very, very niche kink, uh, which is cannibalism. Um, and some of the other kinks, uh, such as four, uh, that are very closely related. Now, if you are wondering, why the heck have you not posted a video in forever and you come back with a cannibalism video, um, you can see the video that I posted prior about uh, Armand Hammer and the allegations against him. I'm not going to say anything more about that particular situation in this video because this really should be a standalone and we'll talk about these, again, quite niche kinks. But just because something is niche doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about it and we shouldn't be aware. And, uh, you know, if you are out there and you do find these kinks exciting, well, we're going to talk about how they usually play out. So, um, as you probably guessed from the name, cannibalism kinks are ones which are surrounding the idea of eating somebody or being eaten by them. Uh, so it goes both ways, obviously. Um, for pretty much any activity that we do in BDSM, we have a uh, somebody who wants to do the thing and somebody who wants the thing done to them. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way right now at the, the beginning of the video or close to the beginning of the video, these are generally 99.9% um, .9 of the time people who are involved in these kinks understand that they are pure fantasy. This is not a kink that you can realistically, or at least in some ways, realistically uh, play out. Um, you know, we can't just be like, hey honey, tonight we're gonna roast you over a fire and and eat you. Um, and roasting over a fire is a very um, sort of specific uh, way that this kink takes life. Now, there are a few other kinks which uh, surround this. So I hope that I'm going to say this correctly. Uh, there is dulcet, which is the cooking and eating of specifically women. And quite often that does uh, revolve around the idea of spit roasting double entendre. And then there is, of course, the kink of vor. Now, vor is, uh, again, still really, really niche, but uh, it does seem to have a slightly more uh, mainstream appeal. Um, so usually it is, um, again, eating or being eaten, but there's a bit of a twist on it. Um, some people uh, like the idea that it could be somehow transformed into a piece of food and then eaten by a person. A very common one that at least I've seen um, throughout my practices as a pro-dom has been uh, the shrinking of a person. So they, they either get shrunk down really tiny and then can be eaten, or the person themselves is normal size, but they're eaten by a giant. Uh, so that's, again, sort of uh, it's a more common, a more mainstream uh, expression of this particular kink. And it's that particular part of it is, is then ex um, connected to the giantess kink, uh, which, again, is somewhat popular in uh, like pro circles and porn and things like that. Um, I've done a few giantess uh, videos and it's super fun because you get to be all Godzilla-y, um, but like sexy Godzilla. I, I don't know how that works, but I don't know that I succeeded in the sexy part, but the Godzilla part I got down right. Um, and then of course there is uh, the idea of being eaten by mythical creatures, right? So obviously this is not a, a kink that you can act out in real life because mythical creatures are mythical, all right? Um, and there's all kinds of other little sort of subsets of vor. There's like furry vor and like all kinds of other things. So um, these are, uh, like I said, not very common. They're very niche kinks, but they certainly are out there. And um, I wouldn't call them super uncommon. I've, I've met a number of people who are into these kinds of kinks. Now, there is again a distinction between what is called hard, uh, you know, hard vor or hard uh, kinks and, and the soft ones. Um, so the hard version of vor is usually with chewing and blood and gore and things like that and, and 
killing the person that is being eaten. Um, so those are considered the hard side of things. The softer side of it is, um, you know, being eaten whole and alive and the person being eaten finding comfort in being consumed by the other and becoming a part of them. Um, and, and that's where a lot of these kind of kinks um, come down to. Like they, they, they all sort of come to that same place with the idea of being consumed by the other person to nourish them, to become a part of them, to be so close to them that you are literally, uh, you know, sharing a body or, sh you know, sharing your body with them or vice versa. So um, that's a really interesting thing to me, just that what looks like such a violent and sort of destructive and awful, like on the surface kind of thing, ends up actually being really kind of sweet, you know, that you want to be so close to a person, um, you know, that you you are consumed by them. Um, now, again, this is not necessarily a, uh, a kink that I am into, but just like many kinks that I'm not into, I can definitely see where people are coming from. Um, now, again, a huge part of this is fantasy and role play uh, because we obviously can't shrink people. We can't be eaten by a dragon or a griffin. Um, you know, we can't literally put somebody on a spit roast and eat them. Uh, we can't do stuff like that. But there are lots of different ways that people will express these kind of kinks um, and, and a lot of them are very common ways of, of, of engaging in BDSM type play, um, but they just put that a little bit of a twist on it. So um, probably a very easy to do and common one is, is simply oral sex and the idea of consuming your partner that way. Um, you know, we already know that um, if you are performing oral sex on a vulva, it's quite often uh, referred to as eating out. I think that's a little crass. Um, yeah, the BDSM instructor is here saying, I think it's a little crass. It's not my favorite term for cunnilingus, but you know, it, it is a common term for it. So, um, and I know that certainly within the femdom world, uh, performing oral sex on a person with a penis, you know, we will make jokes about like, I have your life in my, my mouth here, I could just bite down, all those kind of things. Um, so that's pretty common and you can add some role play elements to that and um, certainly include a cannibalism or eating kink in there. Uh, biting as well, a lot of people are into biting, whether they're into these specific kinks or not, but biting um, and that sort of rough play, um, you could certainly uh, incorporate uh, these types of kinks into different sorts of primal play. Um, all kinds of ways that you could incorporate these kind of kinks into, uh, you know, play that is safe to do. So then we do have other people who are into more edge play activities. So cutting and by, um, sorry, cutting and blood consumption. So you see a lot of these kinks also within like the medical play realm, certainly the blood play and cutting and all that kind of stuff. Um, you see them in all sorts of different uh, areas of kink, uh, whether people are specifically into cannibalism or uh, vor or uh, medical play or just, you know, enjoy bodily fluid play, all that kind of stuff. So there are ways to explore these kinks without uh, breaking the law, first of all, and um, murdering your partner and all those kind of things that we really generally want to avoid. Um, obviously, I'm kind of being silly there, but we obviously we don't want to harm our partners. The philosophy behind kink is hurt, not harm. So anyways, guys, I hope that you found this somewhat enlightening. Again, it's not a kink that I'm personally into, so I can't give you a ton of insight. Um, if I ever do find somebody who's willing to come and talk to us about these kind of kinks that is really into them, um, I'd love to know if you guys would like to see that. Um, obviously, right now, things are a little difficult, what with the whole lockdown situation. But um, in the future, if I can find someone who is willing to uh, talk to us about these things, let me know if you'd like to see another video on that. And um, otherwise, please make sure you follow me on Instagram. That's where I am generally the most active lately. And uh, I am teaching a lot of classes right now. So I will include all that information in uh, the description box and the first pinned comment. So thank you so much for checking out this video and I will see you guys in the next one.